Asen tetse tepuk mapang dongi Bunga arupa bencong mongnong Tane pelata Respected and dear all, I welcome all of you in today's webinar. Thank you for joining us. World Water Day is an international observance day and has been observed on 22nd March every year. Focuses on the importance of water. The UN theme, the United Nations theme for this year's World Water Day is valuing water. And the intention is to inspire people around the world to learn more about water-related issues and raise awareness of the global water crisis. And a core focus of the observance is to support the achievement of Sustainable Development Goal, that is SDG 6, to ensure water and sanitation for all by 2030. In India, more than 50% of the population has no access to safe drinking water and about 2 lakh people die every year for lack of access to safe water. India is currently facing the biggest crisis in its history water scarcity, water pollution, inadequate water supply, lack of sanitation, and the impacts of climate change brings to light the inequality of access to water, sanitization, and hygiene services, and the need to assure the human right to water and sanitation. Today, uh, we are happy to share that some of our NCCI constituent members have been working on water issues and raising awareness at their congregations and institutions. Very shortly, we'll be hearing the interventions and success stories from them. It's a high time for the rest of us as an individual, church, and faith-based organization to address this pertinent issue at the local congregational level to achieve SDG 6 to ensure water and sanitation for all by 2030. May I now uh, request Reverend Asir Ebenezer, the General Secretary of NCCI to bring greetings and share his thoughts with us. After that, I request Mr. Angelus Michael to moderate the moderate rest of the session. Angelus is an executive committee member of NCCI, belongs to Jaipur Evangelical Lutheran Church and heading the partnership desk. So now over to Reverend Asir and then Michael. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Pradeep. Good afternoon, friends. And uh, I join Pradeep in welcoming you to this uh, important discussion this uh, afternoon. As many of you will know, um, while the churches have been working on water, the National Council of Churches in India has not been uh, focusing on climate or, uh, or environment for some time. Of course, we have an eco-justice uh, policy that guides our decisions, guides our interventions. But as a focused area of intervention, we are yet to capture this area. So for on, on different occasions, we have discussed about this. And finally, we thought um, at this point, we should start um, working. And um, a small group of people started thinking about it for some time. We focused on a few important days that we will bring to the notice of the church. And we also said that we will have a relook 
into our eco justice policy. So as a beginning, we thought we will uh, meet together uh, as people who have been working on water and environment um, close to World Water Day, so that we can encourage our churches and our local constituents to um, work on water, to begin working on water. We will also come around um, same time in April uh, to observe um, World Earth Day, and again in June uh, to observe uh, Environment Day. And in, in September, we have the uh, season of uh, creation. That is another occasion where we can invite the churches to um, work on environment and creation. As we all know, these special days um, are observed to educate the public on issues of important concern. It is also a time when we can uh, mobilize political will and resources to address uh, global issues. And thirdly, it's an occasion to celebrate and reinforce achievements of humanity. Therefore, we thought as we begin addressing environment and climate, we will start talking about at least these three important days, uh, Water Day, Earth Day, and uh, Environment Day. And at the same time, inviting people to observe the season of creation in the month of uh, September. We do hope that we will be able to educate the public mobilize political will and resources and celebrate our reinforcement. The theme for this year's uh, Water Day, as all of us know, is valuing uh, water, which can be um, looked at the perspective of for the value of water, which we all know. We know that only one in three persons have access to uh, safe drinking water. And there are several other statistics that go into reinforce that uh, the value of water is being corroded, eroded, and we need to reinforce that value. We also know that value being um, uh, water being a very precious commodity now, uh, a lot of value is attached to that, and therefore it's priced. We also know that sections of uh, rivers are being privatized, um, and uh, groundwater is privatized, the air is privatized, so only thing that is not privatized is the citizens of the country, which very soon the government will also auction, I think. Uh, so water uh, value is fixed uh, to water and that is at a premium. And that is why the common folk do not have access to water. A third perspective to uh, the value of water is about water as value. Those who hold water in importance people who attach value to water is something that we'll have to see. So value of water, condemning valuation of water and looking at water itself as a value is something that we need to see. Today we will know how the churches are responding in a small or large way to this whole issue of uh, water. And we do know that church and ecumenical uh, networks have the potential to accelerate the response. So that will be the um, task of NCCI to take your work, the work of CNI, the work of JELC, the work of CSI, the work of the Baptists in the Northeast, the work of several others who are working on water and take it across to other uh, partners in this network to find how we can accelerate response to this very important uh, issue. I want to thank uh, our colleague in the World Council of Churches Ecumenical Water Network, uh, Mr. Dinesh Suna, who will be joining us uh, a little late uh, for this webinar, um, for uh, the push that he has given us to address issues relating to uh, climate justice. I also want to thank Mr. Michael Angelius, Dr. Uh, Matthew Koshi, uh, Renemla, and Mr. Soumya uh, Mahanti for giving us useful insights on how we can go forward. I also want to congratulate uh, Pradeep and Saurabh for putting this together. So from a small group of people who sat to discuss about this, we enlarge it to a little larger group today to see how we can uh, address water. Tomorrow we, have, uh, we host another webinar, uh, Water and Climate Justice in the Context of Urban Deprived Communities. You know the most affected people are deprived communities 
and in that context even urban deprived communities at least in the low rural context you have tanks to which people can turn to uh, but in the urban context uh, water is another crucial issue so tomorrow we will look at water and climate justice um, uh, urban deprived communities i invite you to attend that webinar also and that starts at three o'clock uh, tomorrow today is four but tomorrow is um, three o'clock with these words, I want to once again welcome uh, comments and feedbacks from you during the question and answer session on how we can take what we have achieved, uh, what we celebrate as our achievements in the field of water to other partners in the network so that we can accelerate uh, a response to this uh, very important issue. Thank you for joining and look forward to a useful and relevant webinar. Uh, I now invite Mr. Michael Angelis to moderate today's session. Thank you, Reverend Asir. Uh, very good afternoon to all. It's a pleasure to be here and moderating this uh, important webinar on water. Uh, we will be observing World Water Day on 22nd of March. Uh, and this will be a, a roadmap to our commitment to water justice uh, in future as National Council of Churches. Thank you, Pradeep, uh, for the uh, introduction into today's webinar. And I wish to thank uh, Reverend Asir and Pradeep in the NCCI for giving me this opportunity to moderate this session. Now, this is not just a Zoom webinar for the sake of having it, but there is a definite plan how the churches in India uh, under the umbrella of uh, the National Council of Churches, but also churches uh, independently and together uh, are going to focus on water justice in future. Some of us are already into this, as mentioned by the General Secretary, uh, like the Church of South India, the Church of North India, and the Jaipur Evangelical Lutheran Church. But we need to have <coughs> more focus and more commitment. The World Water Day, uh, celebrates water and it raises awareness of the global water crisis and the core focus of this observance is to support the achievement of sustainable development goal uh, goal number six which is water and sanitation for all by 2030 this is the united nations uh, framework on achieving water for water and sanitation for all by 2030 the theme of world water day for 2021 is valuing water. So the value of water is uh, uh, much more than its price. It is actually about uh, the household, food, culture, health, education, economic, and integrity. We all are aware that there is a big discrimination on uh, when it comes to the question of accessibility to water uh, based on caste, uh, based on economic and social differences, based on gender and ethnicity. And this is how you know, water is being valued in India and across the world. We have uh, eminent speakers for today's webinar. Uh, we will have four presentations all together. We will start with uh, Mr. Swami Ranjan Mohanty from the Church of North India. Uh, followed by Dr. Matthew Koshi from the Church of South India. And then there will be a short video, video presentation from JLC, my own church. And then uh, to end with, we will have Mr. Dinesh Shuna from the World Council of Churches. So without taking much time, uh, because a lot of inputs will come uh, from the speakers. And then of course, in the end, we will have time for interaction. So I would like to now introduce our first speaker, uh, first presenter of this webinar, Mr. Soumya Ranjan Mohanty. Uh, he comes from the Church of North India. Uh, from student days, very actively involved with the student Christian movement. And he was in leadership position nationally and also regionally. Uh, the grooming on radical understanding of the mission of Christ motivated him to join the social sector. Uh, activity part of land right movements right to education, etc. He has worked with many national and international organizations like LWS, CRI, WaterAid uh, UK, etc. And presently, he is the chief coordinator of the Church of North India Synodical Board of Social Service in New Delhi. 
he hails uh, from odisha so we welcome you uh, mr somya ranjan mahanti and uh, we thank you for uh, for taking your time and for willing to be part of this and i would like to request you now to uh, make your presentation over to mr somya ranjan mahanti Uh, just one more thing before you start. Uh, if anybody has questions, uh, please you can also write on the chat box so that we will collect it and then put it later. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon and thank you so much for this wonderful introduction. And uh, I'm really uh, fortunate to be part of the NCCI's uh, initiative towards water and water justice, and specifically also thanking Nasir. and reverend asir and also pradeep for providing me this opportunity and uh, it's always a great pleasure and i think uh, i should start because the time is very short and it, i think i need to strictly follow the time and on behalf of uh, cna sbs is also and church of north india i bring greetings and i'll just a uh, little bit briefly talk about what exactly cna sbs is works for and the cna uh, sbs is it's a synodical board of social services is the development and the justice board of church of north india which was formed on 1978 as a response of the church to the whole question of poverty and related social justice issues of the poor and the marginalized and the guiding force is the jesus mission and the nazareth manifesto CNA SBS facilitates holistic development ensuring livelihood water sanitation and hygiene education through community mobilization gender mainstreaming and congregation participation and especially uh, we are focusing on the most marginalized communities that is on the dalits and the tribal people and CNA SBS is presently intervening directly and uh, through the advocacy efforts in 12 1200 uh, villages all across six states and are reaching approximately 1.5 lakhs of people and we have a head office in new delhi and also the project offices in different parts of uh, india and next next slide yeah i when uh, we were preparing this uh, present tradition it's a very interesting uh, quotation of thomas muller who was a british churchman and a writer so the question comes we never know the worth of water till the well is dry and exactly the similar thing had is happening in all over the world and specifically in india and uh, the water is Uh, no keep keep the last one i will tell next then you can change it so the water is so basic to uh, our survival yet we still are struggling to ensure the safe water to all and it uh, when i uh, get into the data part some uh, like pradeep has already touched up on it mm, the first biggest uh, difficulty for us is that india is running out of water and there was also a study by the niti ayog in 2018 in regard to a composite water management index related to uh, niti ayog in 2018 which says the 70% 75% of the households do not have drinking water at home i mean they have to go somewhere to fetch the water 84% of rural households do not have piped water supply 70% of the india's water is contaminated either by biological or by chemical contaminations 40% of our citizens will have no access to drinking water by 2030 which is really scary because whatever the demand we have we have half of the supply of it so our demand will be much much higher whereas the supply will be much much lesser and india is currently ranked 120 among 122 in the water quality index and above all india is having 4% of the potable water of the world global water 
and we have 16% of the population. And just one can really imagine about the amount of stress on the water resources in India. And uh, I will uh, present a few of our work, our experiences, and what we really able to experiment in the field and what type of results we have got. So it's not a very big rocket science that we do miracles, but definitely we are able to change the way things were happening. And the, by the intervention of the church, definitely things have changed at a community level. So I will uh, surely share you about few of such experiences. Next. Uh, what we exactly focus, so we all were talking about the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and we are also, uh, in total, we are working on five, and SDG 6, which talks about the clean water and sanitation, is another important component of our work. Our intervention for water is focused on the provisions of National Rural Drinking Water Programs of Government of India. Why I am uh, uh, stressing on that, we are majorly focusing on whatever the government schemes, government provisions are there, and how we can able to make the community mobilized to access this from the government. Because uh, these are very huge, uh, uh, hardware-oriented work. And as a church, we may not be able to provide uh, such type of hardware. To people, but in case of the software, it is our responsibility to see that how this community can be mobilized and can also access these things from the government. And also, we see the whole uh, drinking water and sanitation linkages, which is so interlinked. So, we, if we don't work on sanitation, so the drinking water accessibility may not, or the quality may not be properly achieved. So. We are working on the access, we are working on the quality, and we are working on the quantity issue. So these are some of the major aspects where we put our whole focus on water and sanitation. Next. Next slide. So uh, in relation to the activities, we have several activities and I think uh, some of the activities are very uh, direct in relation to the construction of new water sources because many places where uh, the discrimination, particularly when Angela was telling, because water is not just a physical thing. It has so many uh, social dimensions. And we very well know what type of contexts happen in a community in relation to the uh, drinking water accessibility. The community is divided. I think wherever the Dalits and people are little in the periphery, they never get the chance to fetch the water or they're never been allowed to get the water in a public water pool. So these are some of the major uh, conflicts, what happens. So in such cases, uh, the construction of new water sources are some of the alternates to provide water to the people. And secondly, uh, also, the restoring of the water sources. Uh, there are many water sources which are there, but due to having lack of maintenance, lack of proper uh, handling of these water sources, these are being deformed. So we also try to see that how these already water sources which are there that can be further developed. And also we see that when we talk about safe drinking water, it needs to be properly handled from the source till the home and for consumption, because in many times this handling doesn't happen properly. So the hygiene part plays another important role for the safe drinking water. Many times people, uh, the, the way they take water from the pots or the way keep the water, so they do, actually do, doesn't know how to handle this water. So that's very important for us to see that how the community can be mobilized to take care of it. And water quality testing. 
because water quality is another important aspect in india we know that our water is either being uh, contaminated biological contaminations there are pollutants the chemicals uh, contaminations like uh, arsenic like iron like uh, fluoride contaminations so this is so many contamination happens so he also look into the aspects of how to do the quality testing at a community level so that the proper water can be consumed by the people and wherever the quality is not good that can be reported to the appropriate authority to for the testing and also to uh, see that the water can be available then we also i was selling the sanitation water and hygiene awareness we continue with the community so that the community can be well aware of uh, the type of health hazards the type of impact on the health of children health of uh, themselves also due to not having proper sanitation proper safe water because uh, it also says that due to the water stress or the health uh, issues we have lot of opportunity loss and this opportunity loss in future in say in 2030 40 it will be around 6% of the gdp loss of whole of india so uh, though water is being so basic but it has such a huge impact on the economy also so these are uh, though it sounds very simple at a community level but it has such a uh, long and such a strong linkage to some of the economical losses to india and also what we try to do i was telling that there are so many government programs and we also try to see that how we can tap the resources from the government and the most important principle of this us is that when we see that it is 1 is to 5 is the ratio of the value of money that wherever church of north india cna is base spends 1 rupee we have also uh, calculated and see that we tap around 5 rupees from the government so our basic principle is to see that how the government resources can reach to the people so next and uh, this is next slide please and uh, this is a, a slide which so uh, the hand pumps particularly the hand pump repairing is going on the platform is going on i am giving you a very simple example about the platforms because many a times we may not know exactly about how these platforms are so important for uh, the water because the hand pumps are basically for drinking purpose but in a village people usually use it for washing washing and all these things for that there are lot of water accumulated and uh, around the platform and which really makes the water uh, emanate biologically so these are very simple things yet it has a significant impact on the safe drinking water so we try to train people to tell them about exactly about how they should keep the hygiene into context and also how they can do the maintenance of this hand pumps in case of uh, there is any difficulty any simple uh, maintenance thing this village people can do by themselves so these are some of the techniques some of the trainings we continually give to the community so that for 24 hours 24 into 7 they will be able to access the water next and this is uh, also the water testing because uh, water testing is very important that uh, uh, sometimes the diarrhea and other diseases are due to the contaminated water and we train uh, all our staffs and volunteers through uh, different training programs that they can do this uh, 
to do this uh, expert testing, support testing of all the community um, level water sources. And also whenever they find if there is some more chemical contaminations, they can really refer that to different laboratories, district laboratories in the nearby areas. And wherever there is any uh, such contamination they find, say in case of a biological contamination, they can do the chlorination of the hand pumps. And also they can, if there is any say fluoride or arsenic or anything they found that can be stop having the water for their consumption. So these are some of the, and all these uh, uh, people, those who are in the picture are the staff of SBSS who have been trained in uh, doing the water testing. So these are some of the resources we are trying to create at the community level so that the community will be self-sufficient in taking care of their own water. Then the next. Next slide. And this is also about the awareness. And while we talk about uh, drinking water, we also talk about sanitation. We also motivate people to use toilets uh, and also try to stop the open defecation so that if one person also goes out for defecating, that also makes the water contaminated. So it is very important that people should understand about it. It's not that by force you will tell people, but definitely at the school level, at the community level, and make people aware with that, how it is so much of important for water and sanitation to be good and safe. Also, we do the campaigns like hand washing campaign. So it was the whole church was part of this hand washing campaign and how, why hand wash is also important. So these are small steps. I think it has a bigger impact on the safe drinking water. So these are some of the aspects that uh, mobilization, awareness building, making the community take charge of all these things. And uh, basically the women are much, much more uh, into the leadership because they know how sanitation, open defecation is so harassing for them. And when they know about the exact, they have the toilets in their house, they feel so dignified. So they uh, take the charge of all these things. So therefore, um, sanitation, because uh, the due to urbanization, due to the villages becoming more urban centric or becoming part of the peri-urban areas. So the spaces for open defecation is reducing. So the women, therefore, are much, much uh, bigger role to play and uh, they uh, could understand the benefits of uh, sanitation and safe water. Uh, next, I will, I will share you about one or two uh, stories. This is about uh, uh, Kolhapur and Sangli area. We have the diocese Kolhapur. So this area is very vulnerable during the time of rain because there are a lot of floods. And also it was rain fed uh, during the time, uh, and I mean, the, during the time of summer, it's absolutely dry. So there are a lot of uh, difficulty for people to have water. So we also do the partnership with different organizations who have the resources, but they don't have the reach. So in uh, 2016-17, we were able to provide around 300 bore wells to 175 uh, villages, where around uh, 1,500 uh, households were uh, benefited by this. So uh, that is one of such stories. Another one is also we have uh, working with the next slide. Next slide. Uh, sorry yeah, to come minutes. in, uh, Sonia Bhai. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank two you. minutes, two minutes. I okay, could understand you. when you come. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. so these are some of the experiments that uh, Jal Minar in uh, Chota Nagpur, where uh, you, we don't need to invest in a very big way to see that the water is being reached, but it's a very simple way. Uh, 30, 40 uh, households having their own water supplies. So uh, these are in 13... Uh, villages, we have already made this arrangement for the people with the help of government. 
and uh, people are getting water throughout uh, uh, the day and these are all being with uh, the solar power so uh, there is no difficulty in people getting it so we also uh, learned that when uh, anything is related to out uh, side uh, energy then it becomes difficult so electricity it's always difficult but solar energy is much more uh, convenient for them and the next slide and these are some of uh, next slide please and this is our sustainability what we are looking into we are doing the water security plan and village level where the villages are involved in doing a water audit to see that from what how much of water they require how much of water they have and how they can really recharge their sources and see that how the sources can be for the preserve and then we are i was still in linking with the sanitation and waste management it will be waste uh, solid waste and liquid waste because when the pipe water will come the drainage system will definitely have an impact in the village so we are also looking into these aspects and obviously the most important thing is the community mobilization because otherwise if the community is not mobilized uh, we will be more of a project from the day we will go the project will stop so this is what church of north india is being able to be part of the struggle of water and drinking water in the villages thank you so much i'm sorry that i have taken a little bit more time <laughs> sorry, sorry no no it's fine it's fine i, I i'm sorry for not being so generous in giving uh, <laughs> you more time uh, but that's how it is but we want to thank you for bringing to us this wonderful uh, success stories what you are engaged in the church of north india and different parts of uh, uh, north india and we want to uh, you know take these experiences with us uh, and uh, and churches can learn from this uh, you have touched to wide uh, wide respects of water and you have gone de depth into many uh, problems uh, and complexities of uh, on water issues so we wish to thank you and i'm sure in the end we will have more time uh, for interaction and some questions directly to you so thank you very much again uh, for your valuable time and for time and for this presentation thank you so much yeah, um, our next presenter is uh, dr matthew koshi uh, who who comes from the church of south india uh, he is a green church uh, campaigner uh, since 1992 after retiring as the principal of bishop uh, muir college uh, he is working as the honorary director of the church of south india department of ecological concerns he has initiated the idea of earth bible sermons green parables green miracles and the green school program in the csi ecological concerns is a mission mandate of the church of south india since 1992 The United Nations Development Program has honored the Church of South India with an Eco Award uh, while he was in charge of the ecological wing of CSI. He is also a member of Anglican Communion of Environmental Network (ACEN) steering committee. He has written 17 books and uh, edited 18 books. Uh, so from this we know that he is a man with experience on water issues and i know him for few years now we had the opportunity to attend the program of the united nations in um, rishikesh already few years ago so he is very committed for his work and because of his commitment the church of south india ecological department has reached a height you know and set an example in 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 the whole of india and not only ncci but all of us learn from that experience so uh we want to welcome you dr koshi uh, to this webinar and we want to give you uh, 10 minutes time uh, to make your presentation over to dr koshi thank you my dear i would like to share screen or point so go into the world 
and proclaim good news to the whole creation. That is the great commission of Jesus Christ. How can we preach good news to the whole creation when there is no water? No water, then there is no life. Church has been called to be water healers. Exodus chapter 15 verses 20 to 26. When they came to Mara, they could not drink water of Mara because it was bitter. Therefore, it was named Mara. The Lord showed him a log and he threw into the water and the water became sweet. In 2 Second Kings Second Kings Second Kings chapter second verse nineteen. I could not say that because of that. The people of city said to Elisha, look, our Lord, this town is well situated, as you can see, but the water is bad and land is unproductive. Bring me a new bowl, he said, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into, the, into it, saying, this is what the Lord says. I have healed this water. Ne never again. Will it cause death or make land unproductive? The availability of water. 70% of the earth is covered with water. 97.5% of all water on earth is salt water. 2.5% fresh water. Nearly 70% of this fresh water is frozen in two pores. In 1998, 28 countries experienced water stress. 2025, expected to rise to 56 countries. India will fall into water stress category long before 2025. If available water is lower than 1,000 cubic meters per person per year, then the country is said to be in serious water crisis. 1951, the average water availability was 3,450 cubic meter per person per year. In 1990, it had fallen to 1,250. In 2050, it is projected to fall to 760. Reason for water scarcity. Forests, natural, forests are natural dumps, conserving water catchments and releasing slowly into streams and springs. Chirapunji was the wettest region on earth. 11 meter of rainfall a year. Forests are gone. Now Chirapunji has bringing water problem. Mm -hmm. It is hard to believe even when Chirapunji suffers from water shortage. For nearly 150 years now, all schoolboys in the world have learned that the 4,000 feet high Chirapunji in modern Meghalaya in India is the wettest place in the world, having as much 40,000 mm of rain every year. But what is known is today, there is such a shortage of water in this wet desert. This is a photograph came in the in a Malayalam daily recently. The elephants are coming out of forest for drinking water. Now another reason for water scarcity is cultivation of eucalyptus. Eucalyptus, a habitat of East Australia, is a water absorbing tree. Another problem is mining of forest. It destroys water catchment areas. Tubels also are destroying the storage of water. Abandoned to tubers without water. 20% lacks access to safe drinking water. 50% lacks adequate sanitation. These are the waterborne diseases, water-related diseases. Waterborne diseases, 
water based diseases are water related bacterial diseases water scarce diseases are given here only four out of the 14 perennial or major rivers are perennial these are brahmaputra ganga mahanadi and brahmani global warming following are the consequences earth is warming sea level will rise low lying areas are inundated scarcity of drinking water and salinity emergence of new disease more floods more droughts and famine poor nations worst affected many environmental refugees more than direct land when the loss of land when sea is rising this include erosion patterns and damage to coastal infrastructure salinization of wells sub optimal functioning of the sewage systems of coastal cities with resulting health impacts loss of natural ecosystems and loss of biotic resources a person is collecting water from a river there is no water in the river this is a important incident in connection with water in old soviet union there were two rivers names are known as sarp daria and amo daria they are draining into a big lake called aral sea in 1960s aral sea region is one of the biggest sea region in that area ill conceived soviet irrigation systems reduced the water flow from the rivers needed to replenish the aral sea so today the lake was reduced to a meter mere 25% of its original size the rerouting of amu daria and sar daria to give impetus to cotton production although the aral sea disaster a human made environmental catastrophe was realized in the late 1990s it is the consequence its consequences are becoming even more evident today aral sea population seems more prone to develop cancer during 1980s the occurrence of liver cancer doubled while the incidence of esophageal lung and stomach cancer appear highest this is an aerial view of the aral sea this ship was on in the lake in the aral sea now it is on a dry land there was no water there what csa is doing we are harvesting rain water from the rooftop all the churches and the buildings encouraging people to harvest rain water from the rooftops and make rain pits on land for water recharge avoid leakage of water taps we are propagating propagating and propagating the planting of vetiver to enhance groundwater recharge and avoid soil erosion planting sapling in church campus during important functions encouraging planting of fruit bearing plants in public places which will be used by other creatures of that area the csa has been promoting biodiversity our slogan is plant fruit bearing plants outside your boundaries and nurture it highlighting our spirituality of caring for all ensure that the sapling planted are watered and manured well this is a rainwater harvesting tank and we can see this type of tanks in many of our schools and church campuses the second photograph is csa it is a csa senate center where we are purifying 20000 liters of waste water per day this is a rainwater rainwater harvesting pits which we are encouraging people to do it in their church campus and school campuses this is a rainwater harvesting in bishop mur college mavelikera where i was the principal and we are collecting rainwater falling on the rooftops of the building through pipes pvc pipes and draining it to into small wells near the main well so this is the two wells near the main well uh, earlier we are having water scarcity during the month of april and may 
after this um, rain water harvesting wells and uh, we we got water during the month of april and may there is a small uh, write up about rain water rain water is saying telling her story i am a blank check to you do you think that i am a headache all headaches are due to misunderstandings proper understanding will remove all headaches see my case i have been falling on the rooftops of their buildings for the last so many years during the monsoons i have been running on land to reach the rivers and lakes if you would like to recharge groundwater make the running water to walk walking water to crawl and the crawling water to stop if you would like to recharge the groundwater make the running water to walk walking water to crawl and the crawling water to stop at last i will stop my usual journey and i will be here in the mud pit you made for me yes i will sleep there till the onset of summer i am really thankful to you for the wonderful trust you have given me in the hectic world i will come back next summer to see you again to quench your thirst i want to express my sincere thanks to you for giving me a new dimension to my journey i wish you all so a new life journey without causing headache to others this is the plan we are propagating in the name of the plant is vetiver it is a native of tamil nadu the in it, it will reach out groundwater it will stabilize river banks and roads it will reduce global warming it will prevent soil erosion it will reduce coliform bacteria it will purify contaminated water CSI is the only church in India which supported Gadgil Committee to West, save Western Ghats. Churches to stand against all deforestation programs. So forest is one of the important uh, important place to for the storage of water. If there are no forests, we will not get water. These are the CSI is working for a climate resilient schools and communities. our projects are climate justice ministry publication of eco research materials for clergy and teachers green protocol green school program green audit for tices schools homes and institutions carbon neutral communities climate resilient schools and communities i am concluding by quoting the great sage poet tiruvalluvar without truth there is no humanity without water there is no existence thank you thank you dr koshi if you could kindly uh, stop sharing uh slides yeah thank you so much well we really appreciate what you are doing and the csi and we i was when i was listening to your presentation and the success stories uh, and how you have put things together we really want to go on uh, listening to this uh, but we we uh, we know that we will have another time uh, also to hear more stories from you this also gives us um, a good learning uh, experience uh, to see and uh, witness how a church is engaged in a wide variety of issues about water and about water conservation you know especially the rain water conservation uh, it's such a motivating story that uh, you are involved in so we will definitely take these experiences with us in our planning and coordination in the uh, coming days in the national council of churches thank you dr koshi for your valuable time and for this wonderful presentation uh friends we would like to show you a video now this is a video uh, mostly shot in uh, the area of the jaipur evangelical lutheran church uh, giving a global picture of uh, water facts uh, but also about 
local issues and there is also a song in the end of this video it's an odia song uh, based on water uh, justice and water equality i would like to ask uh, mr george vargis to kindly play this video for all of us 2.1 billion people wake up each morning without access to clean water this means that millions of vulnerable families around the world do not drink cook or bathe with clean water 3.4 million people die each year from scarce and contaminated water sources millions of women and children spend 3 to 6 hours each day collecting water from distant and polluted sources at any given time half of world's hospital beds are occupied by patients suffering from diseases associated with lack of access to clean water over 80% of water deprived household depend on women for collecting water nearly 6000 children die of water related diseases each year 163 million indians do not have access to clean water the ways water is prioritized changed dramatically over the years industries overrule farmers urban claims more water than rural the rich take from the poor lifestyle dominates livelihoods the scarcity of water is only strengthening these trends shortage always doesn't mean a crisis so what does it mean it means inequality as well putsil is a beautiful village in southern odisha and the first village to have micro hydro project The understanding starts of course with the belief that climate change is fundamentally a development issue not a pollution problem focusing on decentralization and sustainability and renewable energy it has developed the concept of renewable energy for a cluster of villages to overcome issues of local appropriateness scale technology transfer and sustainability My name is Barsu. I'm from Putsil village. The water source you see behind me is used for washing clothes, utensils, and we use tank water for drinking and cooking. We face difficulties in cultivation and the rainwater remains the only source for farming. We are one of the first villages in this region. to produce our own electricity by using the stream water building a dam and using turbine and that was without fossil fuel and was the clearest form of producing electricity nothila hataso nothila prithibi chandra surujo tara निर्जन शून्य अंधकार चौधी ग जल पूर्ण नाला आकाश नाला पृथ्वी चंद्र सूरज तारा गण निर्जन शून्य अंधकार चौधी ग जल पूर्ण ईश्वर को आत्म थी व्याप से जल पृथ्वी प्रदत्त ईश्वर को आत्मा थी व्याप्त से जल पृथ्वी प्रदत्त जल को करवा सम्मान जल जीवन सम्मान जल well thank you for watching this uh, short video in this video i will take one minute to explain uh, what was uh, in this video as i mean it is self explained but still 
a village called Putsil, which is a model village, and it is the first village in this region to use uh, to use stream water and produce electricity. You know, uh, without causing any damage uh, to the environment, and uh, it is uh, such a noble uh, work that the villagers did. That time there was no electricity provided by the uh, government. Now, of course, government electricity is there in that village, but those machines are still in function. We also have another example of a village uh, called Lakshmipur, which uh, uh, extracted its uh, the groundwater. Uh, to use for the locality. They had no water source available for household work and for other uh, necessities. But they came up and you know they uh, dig the ground water and use that. You know, we have these two examples uh, very, very unique. South Odisha is also uh, a victim of mining. We have uh, bauxite mining here, and that also causes a lot of damage to the environment. It is not in the video, but it is also a reality. Yeah, so this is uh, what a presentation from JELC, and JELC is trying to bring more awareness, uh, not only among young people, but also among women, uh, fellowship in the church, and also among pastors. With this, I would like to uh, take you through to our next uh, presenter. Uh, he is Mr. Dinesh Suna. Uh, basically, comes from uh, my church, the Jaipur Evangelical Lutheran Church. At the moment, working for the World Council of Churches as coordinator of the Ecumenical Water Network based in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, he has been the chairperson be before becoming coordinator of EWN uh, since 2011. So it's been a decade now uh, of his journey with the WCC and has uh, a deep understanding of water issues uh, locally, but also globally and working uh, with uh, more than 300 churches uh, worldwide, uh, constituents of the World Council of Churches. And uh, this webinar is also one of the results of our discussions earlier, as mentioned by Reverend Asir uh, in the beginning of this webinar. We are very um, glad to have you, uh, Dinesh, uh, Mr. Dinesh Suna. Uh, thank you for joining. And we see nice water uh, background um, where you're seated. And um, thank you for joining and we uh, welcome you and we want to hear uh, your success stories, the stories of the World Council of Churches and the engagement of WCC in water justice. So without taking much time, I would like to now hand over to uh, Dinesh and request him to uh, stick to time. 10 minutes, 12 minutes should be good enough. Thank you and over to you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Angelius uh, Michael, a very old friend like my younger brother have been a co-sojourner in the past several years, probably more than two decades um, in our ecumenical journey. Um, so also many other friends who are behind uh, this very important uh, event. Um, so at the outset, I bring greetings from the World Council of Churches, uh, particularly from the program called the Ecumenical uh, Water Network. Uh, we probably are aware that the World Council of Churches is a global fellowship of uh, churches, about 350 uh, member churches from uh, over 190, um, uh, 120 countries. And uh, we represent uh, roughly around half a billion uh, members, uh, including all the Protestant and Orthodox churches uh, around the world and um, including the Church of South India, Church of North India, and uh, the Lutheran churches in India are all members. Uh, so it's always a pleasure to come and speak to you all, particularly in the events initiated by the National Council of Churches in India, uh, where I also uh, worked um, uh, probably more than a decade ago uh, as a staff. So uh, we are doing this workshop, uh, the, the webinar, uh, commemorating the World Water Day, which obviously falls 22nd of March on Monday. 
and uh, it's the uh, right time to start this event wherein we can uh, already prepare ourselves uh, discussing these issues and the theme as we know that uh, valuing water is the theme and um, I was happy that I could uh, attend some of the sessions uh, where already the Indian scenario has been laid out very nicely by two bigger churches in India, uh, the Church of North India as well as Church of South India. And uh, now also we saw my own church, Angelus Michael and me come from the same church, as you said. Uh, good to see these initiatives. Uh, I would be trying to give a uh, global perspective and uh, valuing water and trying to compare the um, economic value of water, which has been considered more often um, and place it alongside the spiritual and the ethical values of uh, water. Uh, I would like to take you all to an important statement called Water for Life that was issued by the World Council of Churches uh, uh, ninth uh, assembly in uh, Brazil and it reads like this water is a symbol of life the bible affirms water as the cradle of life an expression of God's grace in perpetuity for the whole creation it is a basic condition for all life on earth and it is to be preserved and shared for the benefit of all creatures and the wider creation and at churches we are called to participate in the mission of God to bring about a new creation where life in abundance is assured to all as is promised in John 10.10 10, and also as uh, Amos 5.24 speaks, it is therefore right to speak out and act when the life-giving water is pervasively and systematically under threat. Uh, based on this statement, uh, Water for Life, uh, the World Council of Churches initiated a program called Ecumenical Water Network. And uh, at the EWN, which I coordinate here in Geneva, uh, at the WCC, it believes that the, on the theological and ethical affirmations that water is a gift of God and a public good and a fundamental human right. And this vital natural resource, a prerequisite for life on our planet, however, is taken for granted and exploited for the profit of few, particularly valuing water as an economic um, good. Um, already the Indian perspective has been highlighted uh, by Professor Koshi. Uh, obviously global figures are also known to all of us. I want to reiterate uh, that according to the joint monitoring program of the UNICEF and World Health Organization, uh, we have about one third of world's population, that's nearly 2.2 uh, billion people do not have safely managed water. That means you open the tap and safe and clean water comes through it. Uh, let alone safe water, many people don't have access to taps at home. Uh, about two thirds of world's population, roughly about 4.2 billion people uh, do not have access to safe sanitation as the speaker from CNI was uh, mentioning. And also by 2025, uh, about two thirds of world will be under some sort of water stress. That includes also countries in Europe where there is a uh, water crisis wasn't an issue before. Uh, continuing on the issue of uh, uh, value of water from an economic point of view, we all are not uh, new to water privatization and uh, the sole motive of water privatization is uh, profit and water is blue gold <laughs> for uh, the corporations uh, who are engaged in privatization of water. Uh, for most developed countries, water services were by and large under uh, public control from the very beginning through their ministries and the government authorities, etc. Uh, however, in the 1990s, uh, privatization of water rapidly expanded as uh, the World Bank and the International Finance Corporation they lent somewhere around $75 billion to countries for water and sanitation projects, including uh, privatization. In 1990, $75 billion would be today's probably <laughs> more than double the amount. Uh, that much of amount was pumped into the market for water privatization processes. Coming to India around the same time, a little later in the late 1990s, 
uh, even water privatization started in India. And in the last uh, two decades or so, there has been massive increase in private sector participation uh, in uh, various projects to in the water sector with the sole motive of privatizing our waters. And most uh, of the major private sector players like uh, Suez, uh, VND, Vivendi, Thames Water from London and so on, uh, they're all present in India. Uh, so we in India are not something new to water privatization. And uh, just to keep you in perspective that uh, water privatization is offered very often as a solution to the municipal uh, budget problems or the aging distribution service delivery systems, et cetera. But we need to really uh, go dig deeper that privatization basically leaves the communities with higher rates of the tariffs, worse services, job losses, and many more. Uh, the primary motive of the corporation is to make profit, as I said, and this will influence the pricing, tariff fixing, uh, catering, which place to cater, which place to cut off, the quality of water, which community to get better quality, which to not, cutting corners, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, so governments are accountable to its public. Come next election, they will be held accountable. However, private corporations are not. You cannot take them out or vote them out in the next election. Therefore, their contracts are also often long, 20, 30 years, and therefore they are not uh, accountable as such. Uh, now, coming to the very crux of the topic, valuing water. As I said, the different stakeholders value water differently. For the faith community, water has a strong spiritual value. Uh, for every living creation, water is life. But for corporation and business houses, water is the blue gold just to make profits. Uh, the Bible speaks about water for all and water for free in, a, in Isaiah 55. Very clearly, it says, come all who you are thirsty come to the waters and you who have no money come buy and eat so it's very clear even if you don't have money you are not deprived of water and therefore water should be uh, affordable if not uh, free um, coming to the next point uh, we have uh, therefore opposed privatization of water we have opposed uh, this bottling of water uh, where we pay about more than 2,000 times more than the tap water price by buying a bottled water. At the World Council of Churches, we have become a blue community and we promote uh, public control over water and say, uh, work against uh, privatization of water. Uh, the recent uh, issue I want to highlight is uh, water on the Wall Street. Uh, in Wall Street, uh, where the stock markets um, are all controlled and monitored, last year in December, for the first time in the history, water was listed as a tradable commodity, just like uh, oil and gold. Um, the, the professor uh, Pedro Arroyo, who is the new special rapporteur for United Nations Human Right to Water and Sanitation, uh, he, in a statement, condemned this move and expressed concerns uh, about this new move. And uh, he said that you can't put a value on water as you do with other traded commodities. Water belongs to everyone and is a public good. It is closely tied to all our lives and livelihoods. And it is essential, uh, essential component to public health. Now I continue to say that water is indeed a vital resource to our economy, both large and small scale players but the value of water is more than that. Water has set up vital values for our society that the market logic does not recognize and therefore cannot manage adequately, let alone in a financial space so prone to speculation. So if this move continues, then uh, the stock marketers would be, the industrialists will simply buy off as stocks which is for water from your neighborhood. And you yourself would not be able to access to the water from your neighborhood, from a pond or from a river or so on. So the, this is a very, very pressing concern. We have written a piece uh, in the seven weeks for water. I'll share the link in the chat on this issue. Uh, and we are also going to have a webinar on this uh, topic with the UN Special Rapporteur on the World Water Day on 22nd of March, where we will have different faith perspective, not only Christianity. I'll share the link if you are available and interested, uh, kindly do uh, join in. 
And uh, since the time is about um, 10 minutes already up, I would in the conclude by saying that while water has trillions of dollars of economic valuation in it uh, for the markets, we cannot deny the fact that water is the only resource which makes our planet unique and the difference between life and death. Therefore, we cannot take this vital resource for life for granted. We need to take care uh, of water and promote water for life and water for all. And we as faith-based organizations, the NCCI, the World Council of Churches and all other churches that are present here, we have a special responsibility to ensure that everyone has the human right to water so that all can experience the fullness of life as promised in John 10.10. 10. Thank you very much for this opportunity. We'd be happy to take some questions. Thank you very much, uh, Dinesh Vena, for your uh, valuable presentation and especially touching on uh, the aspect of privatization of water and how privatization of water can lead to depriving uh, communities at the bottom. Uh, this is a very, very important aspect and valuing water is not about pricing water and the commodification of water, but it is also about human accessibility uh, to water and safeguarding human rights on water. So thank you very much for bringing that global uh, perspective to our discussion. Uh, we had very uh, different uh, focuses on uh, water uh, as far as today's topic is concerned. Uh, CNI, you know, was talking uh, talking about how they help communities uh, reach to water through uh, building uh, board bells and all that, and how CSI is also helping communities uh, conserve water uh, that is taking responsibility not to waste water. JLC, in spite of shortage of water, you know, uh, producing their own electricity, you know, from uh, water sources. So meeting their every day need. And of course, WCC is helping churches around, uh, working with important organizations like United Nations and other interfaith organizations, especially worldwide, uh, taking uh, the, the voice of the churches to the global level and also helping churches uh, uh, in the regional and national level. So thank you. I, I really wish to thank all, all of you for uh, bringing so many stories to us, so many learning uh, experiences. Now is the time to have some interaction. I think we have enough uh, thoughts to reflect back and it is time to put some questions and um, without giving a lot of our own inputs, but some direct questions to the speakers so that we can hear more from them. So it's open. I think Pradeep, we can go for about five minutes with questions. Yeah, 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes would be okay. Five to 10 minutes, okay, that's yeah. fair enough. So open uh, for questions now. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, and I'd like to thank once again to you for moderating this uh, session, as well as all the three panelists. Uh, there are two questions uh, to both Dr. Methi Poshi and Soumya also. Uh, though you have uh, shared your success stories and interventions, but um, just if you could uh, supplement to uh, this question. First is how can churches understand the interview uh, sorry how can churches understand and intervene in the design water diversion of water to cities which reduces availability for irrigation especially in the uh, rural areas or villages and uh, how can the farmer gets consulted or compensated or is there any alternative irrigation that can be uh, protected? I didn't understand the question. I didn't understand the question. The, the, the first question is, how can churches understand and intervene in the designed water diversion 
to cities which reduces availability for irrigation in the rural areas or villages i mean how can churches intervene to uh, if the water gets diverted for irrigation from rural areas or villages since you have been working uh, with the dioceses in the rural areas so how can churches intervene to that uh, scientifically speaking diverting the flow of water from one source to another is not ecologically sound so this is the case which i showed in my presentation in south in soviet union two rivers diverted to the cotton fields and the result is the rlc became dry so the, the thousands of people are suffering because of that so diverting a river or a water from one source to another will cause serious ecological problems ecologically that is not sound i think uh, it's a bigger question what you have raised i think i mean how for uh, the understanding of the congregation of the church in regard to the water issues but in a bigger forum uh, like people those who have been uh, directly involved in uh, these issues are well uh, understand these issues but if you go to a congregation and you talk about it how many people would understand certain issues beyond the boundaries of the church so that i think the the whole aspect of uh, discussion around water or the basic amenities of life needs to be discussed in our sermons you know bible studies i think this type of materials or narratives had not been created uh, or been created or not been propagated in the congregation so in that context i would say we need to educate our congregations first and uh, doctor has already told about uh, the um, technicalities of not diverting or diverting certain things so i i would say that uh, our congregation needs to be educated in this aspects and uh, for the make them understand about this uh, pertinent issues which are going to or which is already uh, hampering the life of people at large but your questions are little very big questions i think it's it may not yeah, be answered that, yeah because this one came to the chat box so i thought of asking you that uh, what you have been worked with the congregation especially with dbss and with the dioceses and uh, uh, the 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 village people those who are into irrigation they have been suffering a lot because of big big dams and, and not getting proper water uh, for their irrigation so uh, maybe uh, that is what i also understood when i went to this question uh, dinesh would you like to uh, say something on it uh, uh, not not on this topic anymore i think both of uh, them have already said but uh, there was another question on the harnessing the water from atmospheric uh, environmental uh, you know the, the, the strategies from the humidity etc maybe if others can say something and i can add a little bit yeah there is also uh, one suggestion came that uh, especially to somya and matthew of course and then Uh, he is suggesting that uh, adopting new technology to harness atmospheric humidity to produce potable water at a very reasonable or affordable cost and he has also given the contact of share and care india foundation new delhi uh, they have successfully successfully created uh, such technologies in 2019 yeah um then and yeah so of course so any uh, anything you both would like to say and then i'll ask dinesh to uh, say on it. i don't know anything about that project i mean uh, anything which is going to be for the community and which community can adopt this type of technologies are always welcome and i would uh, and i would also definitely uh, see to it that how that can be beneficial to the communities uh, and thank thanks for that suggestion 
and it's always a sharing of knowledge because nothing is static at any point of time so uh, these ideas are most welcome also by us in aspc thank you thank you samya uh, thank you dr mukti dinesh yeah, yeah if i can also then uh, add uh, <clears throat> obviously uh, the technologies are uh, evolving and uh, we have many options these days uh, harnessing uh, potable water from the humidity in the air itself obviously doesn't cost anything other than you yeah, the basic investment of uh, infrastructure but also uh, these kind of technologies have been successful in some parts in latin america and elsewhere where high altitude regions and also um, you know we have to take into account the cleanliness of our air uh, unfortunately in india uh, like china um, our air is definitely not very uh, pure and therefore there have been a lot of uh, this impurities uh, are always there in there and therefore kind also uh, interact with the water and the air, air. Um, but the the, the best uh, is uh, professor koshi's uh, poem on uh, the, the rain water <laughs> which is pretty much without an investment it is falling on our roofs for ages and uh, if at all we can harness that Oh, rainwater harvesting is very very reasonable without any sort of special investment uh, other than just channeling it so in regions where drought prone areas maybe some of these technologies can be seen but uh, experimented however uh, in places where we get at least some decent monsoon rainwater harvesting should be uh, at least to start with our churches you know <laughs> should have this basic infrastructure along with some solar panels to uh these uh, rainwater harvesting systems thanks well thank you so very much um dinesh has given us some of uh, the links where we can join there are so many webinars uh, especially on 22nd march so you can log in and you can register also there and reverend asi also mentioned about uh, tomorrow's ncci webinar on uh, water and climate justice so for that also uh, you can join since uh, we are running out of time and i don't think much needs to be discussed as per the chat box so i hand it over this time to uh, michael uh, thank you pradeep once again um, even though we didn't have more questions coming but uh, we we had a lot of participants attending this and uh, Uh, we really wish to thank each one of you, especially all the three uh, presenters, uh, uh, Mr. Swami Ranjan Mahanti, Dr. Matthew Koshi, and Mr. Dinesh Shuna for your valuable time. And uh, I think this is important, as as it was also touched by uh, Dinesh, that the spiritual aspect of it is aspect of water is very integral to us because from there we start. And uh, the ecumenical water network has the seven weeks for water that is available on the website for our meditation every day but it is it is a spiritual uh, need but it is also a physical need and we should not forget that aspect of life as well the human rights human dignity and accessibility to water by the least of human beings uh, in our society and in the nation we live i think there our commitment is and uh, i am sure uh, we will work together towards this direction i wish to thank once again all the participants for attending this webinar and do attend the webinar of tomorrow as well i once again want to thank the national council of churches and its leadership especially the general secretary reverend asri benazer and uh, mr pradeep bensjor for this opportunity to me uh, of moderating uh, this webinar thank you uh, everyone and i we wish you on behalf of the team of ncci we wish you a very uh, pleasant evening uh, and goodbye for now thank you so much yeah goodbye bye bye